When it comes to selecting the correct die bushing for your application, the most common question I see on this is how do I set up or select the correct bushing for my Redding S die or whatever die they might be using? What if I told you you were asking the wrong question? When it comes to these bushing dies, the most common thing I hear people talking about are self-centering bushings and hopefully the result of that is going to be better concentricity. But that's never been my experience. When it comes to sizing brass, my results have never been best when using bushing dies. I've always had better luck with full length dies using an expander mandrel. I'm not saying the results that I've had were bad, it's just not been the best. While concentricity may not be everything, I rarely run into somebody who wishes their concentricity was worse. So with all things being equal, most reloaders would pick the option that gave them the best concentricity output. One thing I find when people are talking about the concentricity of their rounds is blaming the seating die. I'm not saying that seating dies cannot induce concentricity error, but most of the time for me, when I've had a concentricity issue, it's been with my sizing process. You might wonder why are we talking about concentricity when it comes to bushings, and that's going to be the highlight of today's video. Today we're not only going to talk about how to find the right size of bushing, but also the one that gives us the best concentricity. If you've been using bushing dies for a while, you might think, well, they're all the same. I know that I did. But if you're not familiar, let's talk about a couple different options. The first standard one I'll talk about is from Redding, is a standard steel. Hornady also has one as well. These are typically your cheapest option. If you want to spend a little bit more money, you can step up to this titanium nitride coated version. But overall, I'm really not sure you're going to see a huge difference. Now, the highlight of today's story is going to be the one from Short Action Customs. What makes this different? Well, this is a standard 17-4 H900 stainless steel that's processed for the same heat treating that they use for their resizing dies. They'll happily tell you that their neck bushings have incredibly smooth inside finish paired with an extremely slick external finish from the heat treatment. The reason why I picked these up, even though I already have bushings in this size, is the claims on their website. Short Action Custom claims that their neck sizing bushings have minimized neck runout in cartridge brass in nearly every die they've used them in. After attempting to eliminate and reduce runout in our sized brass using various commercially available bushings, we realize that every neck bushing has the same flaw, a straight undersized hole when compared to the brass. Short Action Customs claim, should I understand it, is that these bushings should give you less runout. My number one complaint about bushing dies. And if that's really the case, I might completely change my sizing process. You guys might wonder why all this equipment is on the table, and today we're going to use it all. For our runout testing day, we're using the Redding S die 6.5 Creedmoor. We're using Lapua fired brass. It's been annealed in my amp annealer, and we're going to be comparing two separate bushings. Brings most premium bushing, the 288 titanium nitride coating, as well as the short action customs in 287. I do have a 287 bushing made by Hornady, but I'm going to give the most premium rating option at run for its money. And I'm pretty sure when we demonstrate the seating force, you guys are going to be surprised. When we're talking about the brass we're sizing, understand that we're sizing fired brass. This is not new brass. The dimension of the neck of the case coming out of our firearm is going to be 295 thousandths. When people are talking about the dimension for the neck bushings, very frequently you're going to hear two thousandths under the measured neck diameter with a projectile seated in the case setting up the case for what some people would refer to as two thousandths of neck tension. Some people would say three. These are guidelines that you're going to have to choose for yourself, but this should get you in the ballpark. Understand the neck bushing, depending on what you're using it for, either could set your final neck dimension or simply be used to not oversize the brass. So what does that mean? When we use a standard full length sizing die, it has to be able to size any brand of brass. So it's going to oversize the neck. After running a case to our Forrester full length sizing die without an expanding device in it, it's sizing it down to 285 thousandths, 10 thousandths from its original diameter. Now the projectile for these is 6.5 millimeter or 264 thousandths. The dimension I usually set my neck tension at with this is running expander mandrel through it that's 0.262. There is a little bit of spring back involved there, but pretty much that dimension is going to be at 288 thousandths. So if we Take that same piece of brass, seat a projectile in it and measure it. We're going to measure that at right around 290 thousandths. So with our standard logic, if we were picking a bushing, we'd be looking for a 288 thousandths number. At least if we were looking for that 2 thousandths neck tension dimension. Please realize that that half a thousandths is within tolerance. You can argue that number whichever way you like. So for our particular option today, we would choose the 288 bushing from Redding. And that's what we're going to be sizing to today. Some of you might think, well, the Short Action Customs is a different size, 287. 
I've measured both of these bushings with pin gauges and they are very, very close, if not exactly the dimension that they are labeled at, both 288 and 287. However, when we size brass, we're going to get interesting results here. For today's test, I ran 11 pieces of Lapua brass through each one of these and the results is what we're going to talk about, both concentricity as well as dimension. The overall dimension in the middle of the neck coming out of the 288 bushing, believe it or not, is 287 thousandths. Running 11 pieces of brass through the Short Action Customs is going to give us the same 287 thousandths measurement in the middle of the neck. Which you might wonder, how can this be? And I think that's a good question. And this will go back to the advertisement from Short Action Customs. They stated that every neck bushing has the same flaw, a straight, undersized hole when compared to the brass. And I think that's what really makes these die bushings head and shoulders above the competition. We'll put a picture on the screen and hopefully you guys can see this. It's very difficult to get on camera, but if we take two pieces of unsized brass, take our bushing from Short Action Customs, it does have a direction, so it has to go one way only. You can easily set it on there and it goes down a little bit further on the neck. Turning it over easily, you can see that I didn't have to shove it on there very hard and it stays very easily. Doing the same thing with our reading bushing, I can try and force it on here and I can get it to stay, but showing it on camera is very difficult. I'll put a picture on the screen to give a better example. Hopefully this picture makes it more clear that you can see the Short Action Customs version allows the brass to enter it much further before it starts the sizing operation. And I think this is what's going to give us such interesting results when we talk about concentricity. My standard disclaimer is going to be if you already have bushings and you're happy with their process, I'm not telling you to change but I do think these results are very shocking. And again, I'm not saying these results are bad, but you're just going to have to judge them for yourself. Starting off with the Redding 288 bushing, we can see that somewhere around a thousandth of runout is going to be what you're going to see. In our example case here with the worst concentricity, we have a little over three thousandths of runout. I don't want to call it four, but it's certainly over three. If you'd like to make that number smaller, I guess you can call it plus and minus one and a half, but we're looking at the overall change. That is a significant amount. I'm sure someone was going to want to argue about the resolution to gauge. You guys decide for yourselves. I'm not here to tell you one way or another, but the results are going to be clear. But again, maybe you're happy with those numbers. And if you are, I'm not going to complain. That is the variation I've been used to getting when we're using these bushings. And again, why I'm not super fond of them. With my standard process, I've been able to pretty consistently be somewhere around a total run out of around one thousandth, maybe a little bit more. And that's what I'll show you on your screen now. These are results that I've been able to achieve very consistently with a full length sizing die and a mandrel two thousandths under the neck dimension. But let's take a look at these short action customs one. Starting off with an example of our best, there's almost no run out at all. And running through a few of these, we can see that those results are very consistent. Out of all the sizing I've done with bushings and all the calibers that I have reloaded, I have never seen results this consistently low. And let's go to the worst case. The worst case out of all these I've been able to find is giving us a total runout number of somewhere around a thousandth. A thousandth of total runout. The worst example out of these 11 is basically giving me results consistent with my standard process and I didn't have to run it through a standard full length sizing die. And make no mistake, we are full length sizing these cases as they're being sized. And these are results that we're getting. And if you can remember, we talked about the dimension that they came out of, right? The Redding 288 bushing is giving us somewhere around 286 and a half, 287 thousandths of that outside neck dimension. When we use the Short Action Customs version, 287 is giving us 287. And we're going to even be able to see this when we look at the seating force. Looking at the seating force of Redding, I'll try and slow it down a little bit just to make it more obvious. With the standard Redding 288 bushing, that size piece of brass, start seeing the projectile when the gauge is somewhere around 28 and it maxes out its seating force at 56. The piece of brass we sized with our Short Action Customs 287. The seating process, the best I can tell, started right around 18. It's very smooth and so you don't get that initial jerk. And we're maxing out at 42. Even though we had a smaller bushing, the overall force required to seat it in our Short Action Customs version was less. So what I don't know is, is this going to change our overall neck tension since it seems to be changing our seating force? That, I don't exactly know. Looking at the concentricity values, so far the Short Action Customs bushing are living up to their promise. They're actually producing better concentricity, which is what has turned me off from using bushings from the beginning. The next question everyone's going to ask, of course, is price, and I'm not going to promise you these are bargain basement bushings. 
but when you have a premium product, they rarely are. This is early July 2021, and right now these are listed for $35 on their website. There is a 4th July sale going on, so if you catch this video on the release date, there might still be on sale. If you watch the channel before, you're going to know that I'm a big fan of the comparator set that Short Ash and Cousins produce. It's very nice, works really good, and though it's a premium price, it is certainly a premium product. So far, I'm really impressed with the Short Action Customs bushings. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you want to understand about how the neck tension value you choose affects the performance of reloads, make sure you check out this playlist here. And it's going to go over some testing that I've done and the results that I was able to achieve. I hope to see you come back next week. And until then, stay safe in small groups.